Hi, it's Heather from Thicketworks, and today I'm excited to share my very first experiments with Seth Apter's Baked Texture Embossing Powders for Artists. Since the moment that Seth first announced this new release, I was so excited, so I pre-ordered back in December. Well, they finally arrived, and I was on cloud nine just opening the box. If you don't already follow the altered page and Seth's social media accounts, please do. He always has amazing things to share, like his new release of Baked Texture. I decided to create a quick sample card on some neutral gray cardstock using each of the colors in turn, and we're starting out with Rocky Road. I also wanted to test a variety of binding media, so I'm going to begin the process by using Versamark to stamp the same exact motif over and over again and use it with each of the new baked textures. The first thing that I fell in love with was the fact that all of these embossing powders are nuanced. Almost all of them are created from a variety of particle sizes and pigments. It's that subtle variation from one area of the embossed motif to the next that just makes my heart beat faster. I'm a huge fan of both metallic surfaces and grunge, and Seth has managed to combine these two obsessions of mine in this release. I am smitten. I've always been a huge fan of embossing powders, but I've never found, for instance, a metallic gold that meets my inner desire to have something that has a nuanced surface until I heated up ancient amber for the very first time. This is the gold embossing powder that I have been searching for my whole life. I love that. I recently had a friend ask me which of this new release is my very favorite. And frankly, that's a difficult question to answer because look at this. Dirty Sand has this amazing combination of flecks of darkness and gleaming bright metallic and chunky rust. Oh my goodness. Just watch this bloom. It's incredible. The final bake texture that I'll test in this way is patina oxide. And yep, I'm just as much in love with it as all the rest. But what's coming up is my all time favorite. I'm going to begin this process by creating a background that contains several varieties of color using vintage photo and spiced marmalade distress inks to do some stamping and some distressing. And that's important because the vintage beeswax baked texture is perfect for creating a faux encaustic effect. To take full advantage of that effect, it's important to have several layers of pigment going on in the background. So now that we've stamped our motif and added some DIY coffee stain, I'm going to distress the edges and the surface with a final swipe of vintage photo. I'm also going to be testing a different binding medium. I'm using vegetable glycerin rather than Versamark to create a layer to which the vintage beeswax can cling. Because glycerin is not a water-based medium, you can paint it across the surface of distress inks without worrying about it causing smears. Glycerin is very inexpensive and it's a wonderful way to apply any embossing powder to a large surface like this tag. Seth recommends at least two full coats of vintage beeswax to get the full effect. And you can see how shiny and textured that first layer has turned out to be. Now I'm adding a second layer. Now encaustic surfaces are not super shiny and Seth has a wonderful way to create a matte texture over this gorgeous shiny surface. Now this is a beautiful treatment as well, but I was really anxious to see how far I could take the faux encaustic look. I've torn the first tag and mounted it over a tag that's only been treated with distress inks. 
And next, I'm going to be adding a layer of matte medium to portions of the surface of the vintage beeswax. I've decided to leave an exposed strip of the original vintage beeswax so that we can appreciate the difference that the matte medium makes in the final outcome. And here you can see the rich soft gleam of the matte medium areas as opposed to the beautiful clear translucence of that that has not been coated. Next I want to create a border using Rocky Road and spiced marmalade as a binding medium. This is a test of how the embossing powders cling to distress inks. And the results of this test are, they cling beautifully. Yep. Now things are gonna get a little crazy over the next few minutes because I made it my personal challenge to include every one of the new baked texture embossing powders on this single tag. So get ready for more experiments. Using glycerin again, I'm just going to add touches of chunky rust. I am a huge fan of rust effects and so I know I'm going to be reaching for this particular baked texture over and over. Next, I'm going to use glycerin to create random areas using the deep sea baked texture. I warned you it was gonna get a little crazy around here. The deep sea baked texture adds dark and mysterious areas. Next, I'm going to reach for patina oxide and that will create amazing bright lines of gleam throughout the design. Is it just me or do you get a thrill out of watching an embossing powder bloom like this? I mean, this is just magical. And the fact that it works so beautifully with so many different binding media is a total bonus. Using embossing powders with stamped motifs is totally one of my favorite things to do, but I find it deeply exciting to be able to create drips and splatters and blotches of super cool colors and textures. Let's see how these work with Boss Gloss by Stampendous. I'm confident that this little experiment will be just as successful as all the other binding media that we've tried. Okay, so we've added some areas of dirty sand and now it's time for the final star of the show, Ancient Amber. These custom blends of color and texture are just unlike any embossing powders that I've had the pleasure to work with in the past. And I am completely in love. And this is the end of our experiment. I've used every single one of the baked texture embossing powders on this little tag. And frankly, I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. It's gorgeous. This is one of those product lines that engages the imagination and helps us expand our vision of what's possible. I don't know about you, but I'm a big fan of any product that helps expand the creative possibilities for mixed media and the new baked texture embossing powders definitely do that. This is only the first of what I'm sure will be many, many experiments using these new extraordinary products. And I want to personally thank you, Seth, for keeping in mind people who appreciate the open-endedness and the artistic freedom that this new line of product embodies. Thank you. And that, my friends, is that. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Until next time, bye.